By the 1970s, a number of farmers started to search for a better way. The movement they started has come to be known as conservation tillage. Motivated initially by the high cost of fuel, they sought to reduce the number of times a field was tilled before planting, breaking up the soil to a lesser degree and leaving a higher amount of crop residue on the surface. The techniques vary from simply reducing the amount of tillage to eliminating plowing altogether. The USDA, which considers conservation tillage any method that leaves at least 30% of the crop residue on the surface, has been studying various reduced tillage techniques and encouraging farmers to convert to the practice. But while conservation farming has become the acknowledged future of agriculture, mastery of the technology necessary to convert to the practice has been elusive. ideas are to reduce the risk as much as possible, reduce all the risks as much as possible, because there's a few of the risks we can't control, the weather mainly, uh, and, the, and the rainfall we get. You can do something about the way you place the seed in the ground, the way you conserve that moisture, uh, by not tilling the ground, by not allowing the weeds to grow. You conserve the moisture and reduce that one risk, which is the major, major risk, I, I would say. We have quite a bit better emergence seed emergence and more sure seed emergence uh, uh, over a wider range of conditions. In the past, the greatest increases in yields have come from the favorable cropping conditions in the industrialized nations. Future increases will have to come from raising the productivity of third world farmers who use traditional methods to cultivate low yield crops under marginal conditions. This technology could help provide a new strategy of efficiency and sustainability that will meet the needs of subsistence farmers and begin to address the environmental and economic problems linked to more intensive cropping practices. So it may be that we're about to come full circle, but can the introduction of a single new implement reverse the forces of a problem as massive as the rapid depletion of the world's soil resource? The answer might be yes. After all, it was the introduction of a single invention, the moldboard plow that first set us on our current course. If there were an agriculture that had small economies of scale, which enriched the land rather than depleted it, that brought sustainability to the world's farmers, then such a system might well sweep across the globe from the Great Plains to the Third World, and with it turn back the advancing wastelands that threaten someday to starve us all. It may be that man will get a second chance to bring the land back from exhaustion, to build the soil up rather than to let it slip away, to take a harvest from the land and at the same time make an investment in the ability of future generations to do the same, to use the wonderful engine of life beneath our feet. That such a movement might take place seems almost inevitable. But the greater question may be, whether the new technology will be adopted on a global scale in time to avert the coming crisis in food production.